everyone. Welcome to Let's Talk About It. I am so excited about this time of year. I just get energized during the season of Christmas. So I want to take this opportunity and thank you, Michelle, for once again being on the set with me. Thanks for We've, having me. All right. We've got a great program lined up today, but I tell you what, it is Christmas season, and I love this time of year. Like I said, I get energized during this time of year and seeing all the great things that's going on and everyone getting ready to celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But there's a lot of other things that goes on during this time of year, and so we want to encourage you to participate in all the festives and all the activities and to be sure that you go to church and that you celebrate the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, but that you also be safe during this time of year. Also, every Sunday morning at the Walk in the Word Church at 1030 a.m., we are lifting up the name of Jesus. And you know this is the season for us to rejoice and be excited about what God gave us. And he gave us his only begotten son that we can believe on him and that we can have salvation. So I want you to come out and join us on at 1030 uh, on Sunday mornings at the Walk in the Word Church, and that's 1201 Stubbs Avenue. But also on December 22nd, we are having our Christmas program. Yes, you know we love to have all the children uh, participate in the Christmas program and tell you about the story of Christmas, but some other things going on like the trimmings of Christmas and things like that. And Michelle, is always a great time. So many persons come and be with us at the mm -hmm. Walk in the Word Church to celebrate Christmas. So come and celebrate Christmas with us on December 22nd, that's at the 1030 service right there at the Walk in the Word Church. You're going to hear all of the beautiful songs uh, uh, that they sing during the holiday season. And I guarantee you that you are going to enjoy. You're going to enjoy celebrating Christmas with us. So that's December the 22nd at 1030 a.m. Come on out to the Walk in the Word Church, and I guarantee you're going to have a great time. Michelle, last time you were here on the set with me, we began to talk about a topic that has really concerned me. Mm -hmm. And I'm concerned about it because God gives us things to use in a positive way. But if those things are used in the wrong way, they can become negative and harmful to us. And we're talking about social media. I hope that you tune in the last time and you got a chance to, to hear what Michelle and I talked about uh, on social media and how social media can be such a positive instrument to spread the gospel, to share information about things that's going on in our lives. But at the same time, it can also be negative if used in the wrong way. So I tell you what, Michelle, to bring everybody up on, on what we talked about a little bit on the last time, let's just start talking about some of the positive things that uh, mm -hmm. social media can be used for. It took me a while to learn how to text and all of that. You know, I'm not techie. You know, my husband is the one that's techie. You always having to come in the office and show yes. me how to do something. I always say, Michelle, come show me how to do this. So, you know, it's so much to learn. It seemed like every time I learn a little bit about this phone, then I end up having to uh, uh, learn something else because it seems to be continue to yes. change. But what a positive instrument that we have in our hands mm -hmm. that we can use to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ and to do some other great things. So let's just begin to talk about some of the positive things, and then we're going to shift on into some of those negative things that can happen when we uh, misuse or abuse social media, and also how parents need to pay attention to their children mm -hmm. and what they are receiving and sending out in using social media. Okay. Some of the positive things that I've used social media um, for is enhancing business opportunities like I work for a company and we use social media just to uh, spread news about what's going on in the company and okay. we can do that at church as well like we market mm -hmm. the church programs and things of that nature and those are some of the positive things that we can use social media for okay so she said we could use social media for marketing wow what a great tool that God has given us for marketing so in your business you can uh, market uh, your business tell them what's happening what's mm -hmm. going on send out emails and things of that nature in social social media, just give them a great example, you know, of marketing and everything. But also, you said we could advertise things that's taking place in the church. Like right, right now, we have a, a musical that's taking place on the 13th. Yes. And you are advertising it. You did the... Um, we created an event for it, invited mm -hmm. um, different people in the community to come out. Um, we spread it or so, um, socialized with it every single day, just letting people know we are uh, to be reminded to come out on December 13th at 7 o'clock. 
Okay, so social media can be used to advertise your church, your event, things that are happening to advertise your business, and that's one of the positive things that, you know, you can send out. I think also there's something you can use where they can respond back to you uh, yes. to let you know that they're going to come, yeah. that they're coming. I they, think So that's a yeah, great they, idea. They mark interested. Um, if they're interested in going, then maybe they have to look at their schedule and see Then for sure they can just mark I'm going, and they know for sure that they're going. So that way you can have a head count of how many people are going to attend your event. Okay. Now, I've done that before as well. You know, got an invitation through social media, and then I sent back and said, okay, I'll be there. And so that way they can count and give an account uh, for how many. Okay. Another a way, other than, like I said, is sharing the Word of God. You know, what, what an awesome tool that this phone, the social media, sharing the Word of God, sending out a message every day to someone. Mm -hmm. And you, they got a thing on here, you say messenger. Yes, it does. Um Whenever people send you messages, like having a text messaging app on your phone, they, um, they just text you through voice, Facebook or Twitter or however you have your messenger set up, and it just comes to your phone just like text messaging would. Okay, all right. And then, like, for instance, to let people know what's going on in your life. Like, for instance, not too long ago, my brother went home to be with the Lord, mm -hmm. and I asked you if you would please send it out to let those persons know because some persons knew that I had been praying for my brother. Uh, uh, his life and things of that nature and for his health and uh, the Lord chose to take him home and we wanted to share that especially with those that we're in contact with and you were able to put that out on social media and of course I got so many responses so I thank you so much for that on on that information so that's another great way that we can use social media okay Yes, staying up to date with everything that's going on in different persons' lives, just so you know whether they're grieving or whether they have an anniversary, birthday, anything. Um, it's pretty much put on social media nowadays, so you have um, access to people, um, events and um, anniversaries and things like that as well, too. So now people are doing more social media than they're doing maybe ever trying to advertise on newspaper? Correct. Because they can get this every day, you yes. know, instead of trying to send a letter or mm -hmm. a postcard or something. You know, and I'm not against any of that. But I'm just saying social media, you're getting it immediately because if you right. walk in, the, in a restaurant or anywhere, everybody's got their phones in their hands. Mm -hmm. So they're reading and staying up to date with what's going on with social media. So those are some of the positive things, especially in sharing the Word of God. On Sundays, let's talk about on Sundays how social media works on Sundays when the preach word is going forward and you can't be there. How, 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 how does social media help us in that way? We can go live. Every Sunday we have a service, we go live. Uh, and you can go directly to our Facebook page and you'll see the message that's going forth. So anyone, no matter whether they're in New York or Texas, wherever, they can just tune in and see, see what's going on. Because I know we have followers in Texas um, that like to listen to the word. We even have persons in, I think it was like New Mexico or New Mexico, yes. um, something. And they just look and they are able to come in and um, stay connected to our ministry. Yes. Social media, that's a great tool, once again, for staying connected to the ministry, getting the word of God. You know, if you're not, if you're uh, bedridden, you're home, you, can, you can't uh, uh, make it to service that day, or even if, say, you had to work that day. Then, as she said, we're posting live. So you can go to social media, tune right in to walk in the Word Kingdom Church and get the message. Right. Hear the message just like we were there. So now that's one of the positive sides of social media. But yes, there is a negative side. And that's one of the things that I am really concerned about because I hear so many things that takes place, parents, with children and what's happening with some of our children because of social media. Now, one of the things that becomes a negative parents with our children is that they spend more time strolling on social media than they do in family time. Right. I've noticed that with a lot of um, children, even my son sometimes will be like, where's he? Like, we're at dinner table. He's still in his room looking at YouTube, and it kind of distracts them from what's going on in their family. And then they get frustrated whenever you say, hey, come to dinner. Like, we're getting ready to go out as a family. Why are we going out? Because they're, they're going to be on the phone. Yes. And they're yes. connected to that. So we have to make sure that we're allowing limited time on the phone. Wow, that's good. Now, allowing limited time on the phone. She has three sons. So she's saying that her son sometimes wants to just be on the phone. And I know I have grandchildren that do the same. And it's like they're sitting there and they just stroll and it gets their attention and keeps their mind so to the point where they don't want to spend family time. Mm -hmm. Parents, I want you to watch out for that because that is not good. If they want to spend all their time on social media checking out what's going on in other parts of the world other than spending that quality time with family. So she said you need to give them limited time. 
the time that they're going to spend on the phones with social media, and the time that they're going to spend with family and doing some other things because family time is important time. It is very important. Yes, it is. One of the things we have to do is create him a schedule. Okay. Um, that way he knows this is this is eating time, this is bedtime, this is time we clean up, this is time we're going to go out and spend time as a family. That way he keeps his mind in order to where he's wow. not um, depending on just being on the phone all day. He know he has responsibility. Yes, you said something that's so key right there. It keeps his mind in order mm -hmm. to know that you can't just sit on the phone all day long. I know I'm talking to somebody, parents. She said she had. She said she had to make a schedule for her son, and I know my daughter has had to make schedules for her sons mm -hmm. to tell them what time they can be on social media and what time they have to do their schoolwork, that they have to have family time, that they have their chores and things of that nature. And we want to make sure that, like we said earlier that social media is a great positive tool when used in the right way. But if it's used in a bad way, it can really create some problems for us in the long run, especially for our teenagers. Yes, it will. One of the things that the, um, the teenagers and the children do now is they find like different games to where they can um, get connected with. And some of those things are positive, but if we don't know what the games that they're connecting with, it can be negative, especially if it's like a lot of violent games and you're wondering why they're lashing out at you and becoming... Um, wow. angry and mad all the time, then you have to be able to know what's going on on that phone. And if we're not checking it, then we're like, we're not in tune with what's going on with the children. Yeah, we must check even the games, she said, you know, of what games that they are watching on social media because they have an effect on our children. And if they are watching a game that has a negative uh, uh, perspective to it, a negative uh, uh, message to it, then you may want to check to see why your child is acting out in a particular way because it may have been an influence on that child. The Bible says evil communication corrupts good behavior. So your child can have a great behavior, good behavior, and then stay on social media for a couple of hours, uh, uh, play a game that had a negative uh, a message to it, and now that child is responding and acting out in it. Matter of fact, we had a situation like that at the church where there was a young man that the mother said that the child was uh, uh, acting out and, and angry and, and they had taken him to the doctor and didn't understand why, found out that all that child wanted to do was stay on the phone, uh, on mm -hmm. social media and play that game and that game began to change his personality. He began to act out and he said, I get angry when I don't win the game. I get angry mm -hmm. and he begins to speak out that way. So we have to be careful to make sure, parents, that we are putting a time limit and monitoring what our children are watching on social media and when they're strolling through, the, through their, their phones and connections. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing, uh, Michelle, that we read about, and we talked about you and I earlier, was that how social media affects the self-esteem and the confidence. Uh, this study says that with many social media platforms, focusing on appearance and the idea of creating what appears to be a fulfilling and satisfactory life, many users are beginning to experience lower levels of self-esteem and reoccurring emotions such as envy and jealousy. Wow. Because they're jealous and envy of what they're watching on social media. Right. I know one of the things that my son would do is he would like come to me and say, can I have this? Because such and such have it. And then if we don't give it to him, he lashes out and get upset because everybody else have it. And then he begins to continue to desire what they're having. So he creates hatred towards us, his parents, because we're not giving it to him. Wow, that's true. Because sometimes he told us, I hate being in this family. Y'all yeah. don't ever give me anything that all the cool kids have. Yeah. Now, parents, I know you've heard that. This is not an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. I know you've heard that, parents, because I'm one of 12 <laughs> children and my daughter got six grandchildren. So I know you've heard that. Why? Where did that child get that from? They're reading it on social media. They're seeing what others have, and then they want to have that same thing. And so once again, when they see it over and over again, they feel like something's wrong with me or something's wrong with my parents that they can't give me what I see here on social media. And it begins to mess with them mentally and emotionally. So that's why we're saying to you parents, social media is great. It's a wonderful tool for advertising and getting messages out and things of that nature. But when it comes to our children and our teenagers, we have to be sure that we are monitoring them and making sure that they're not getting too much of wrong information that can affect their homes and affect them. 
This says with its many filter and lighting options, social media is altering the very way we view not only others, but also ourselves and creating an unnecessary need to be perfect, especially among millennials, which could also be connected to eating disorders and body dysmorphia. Wow. Because yeah, we're trying to be like everybody else. We have the desire to be like that person because that person has more likes. That person has more shares, the comments, and things of that nature. It plays effect on us because, oh, well, I don't have that many likes. So I want to look like this person so I can get some likes. Okay, you don't have that many likes. Yes. That likes is when you go and you read something and then you push the button and you say you like it. Mm -hmm. And then it tells you how many likes you have. Yes. Wow, I probably don't have too many because <laughs> I don't ever hardly push the button <laughs> likes. But, okay, likes and also friends, right? Yes. Some people have so many friends. And I say, how do you get that many friends? So they just become friends with anybody. Now, that could be dangerous as well. Yes, it can be. Um, you never know who's behind that computer screen. Um, wow. There are so many people who just put on fake profile pictures, and they become this person, and they inbox you, and then now you're friends with them, and you meet them somewhere, and that's not who, who that was. Okay. All right, we have to watch. It's not about how many friends we have, but it's about who are our friends. Have we, do we know who these friends are? Do we know who they are connected to? Because we have to be careful, parents, especially with the teenagers and the millennials, that we are not taking in negative information, holding conversations with persons that we do not know that can really corrupt our behavior, corrupt our, our thought process, and create problems that otherwise we wouldn't have had other than when we hear uh, on, on social media. So we want to make sure that we are, once again, limiting what, we, what we're listening to. You know, I often say that if I look at it and it's not positive and it's not bearing witness with my spirit and something that I need to take in, then I don't read it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I know how to, you know, stroll on through it and just not give much time to it. Oh, time. That's another thing. Mm -hmm. Social media can take all your time away from positive things and yes. away from things that you really need to be doing to accomplish purpose in life, to accomplish something that God has called you to do, to accomplish your growth in life. So social media, staying on too long, spending too much time with it can really uh, take away from what you really should be doing uh, in a positive way in your life. Yes, one of the scriptures that we can apply today is the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy. He comes to kill our self-image of ourselves because we're yes. trying to project our image on to other people and become like them. It steals our time. And sometimes yes. it destroys families because all we do is spend time on social media to where we don't spend time with our spouse. Yeah. Because it's, we take our phones to the bedroom. That's right. Oh, I don't take my phone to the bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you do have some people, I really, that takes their phone to the bedroom, like you said. So instead of having conversation and talking about the day and the children and, and our future and our vision and where we're going, mm -hmm. husband and wives have the phones in the bedroom, as she's saying, and they're, they're strolling once again on social media, and then things come up, you know, and they haven't had an opportunity to discuss it because of the time that they spent. Like mm -hmm. I said, social media is great, you all, but at the same time, if misused, and it becomes an abusive thing that can abuse our, uh, our uh, relationships, our, with our relationship with our children, uh, our jobs and things that we need to be doing, our relationship with Jesus Christ because we're not reading uh, the Word of God, we're not going to church. All we're doing is staying on social media. And you gave a good scripture. You said that the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He comes to steal your time mm -hmm. so that he can destroy your relationships and destroy your career and things of that nature. And Wow, we've got to really watch this. This says that another, another study conducted in 2016 by Penn State University suggested viewing other users' selfies and pictures lower our self-esteem. In other words, if I'm viewing social uh, uh, media all the time and I'm seeing all the beauty of the ladies and things, uh, that it can lower your own self-esteem. Yes, because we expect that we're supposed to look like this because everyone else is looking like this. They have the, the money to buy these things, and we don't. So it kind of plays a part in how we think of ourselves. Why don't we look like this? Why can't we have what they have? And it's all going in because we sit in there and we're constantly reading it and looking at it. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you pay attention to like that or give your attention to, then it becomes part of you. Yes, it does. You know, and so these are great tools. Social media is great. That's what we're talking about today. We're talking about how social media is such an awesome uh, invention 
an awesome tool and, that we can use to promote uh, our lives and promote the kingdom of God and say positive and great things to people and encourage people when they're going through things and to advertise. But yet at the same time, this can be a very dangerous tool for our teenagers and our children when we are not limiting the time and we are not uh, 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 looking at the right things and reading the right things and not putting a guard. The Bible says to guard our hearts because out of it are the issues of life. He tells us to guard our eyes and our ear gate. And when we're not putting a guard over it and we're just reading anything and taking anything in, we begin to live out of that. We'll live out of this. And Michelle said earlier that you began to act out it in your behavior. Yes, you do. You um, begin to consume so much of the information that you become a part of what you see. Whether it's good or whether it's bad, it becomes your reputation now. It becomes a part of your integrity. Yes. And um, it distorts your image because you're trying to be something else. Wow, I like that. It distorts your image because you're trying to be something you saw on social media. Instead of being who God called you to be and operate in the things and the gifts and all of that that he gave you, you're trying to be what you're seeing on social media. I know someone that's got a problem right now, and I think that's why this message was so birthed. And, and since you've experienced it with your children and mm -hmm. I'm experiencing it right now with, with someone in my family, is that they're so addicted. And, yes, you can become addicted to social media that when they took the phone from her, she mm -hmm. lost connection and she felt like something was really taken from her. And with that, mm -hmm. it was a really bad thing. She ran away from home. That's why I'm talking about this. She ran away from home, and they couldn't understand why all we did was took her phone from her because she was on the, on the, on the phone too much. But when we found out, it was you, you disconnected her mm -hmm. from what she was used to doing every day and from her conversations and who she began to think that she was. You disconnected her from that. And it's been a journey of really helping her in these areas to get back. So that's why this subject is so important and why we're talking about this today. Uh, uh, because it says here, research also conducted by another university said that women compare themselves negatively to other women's content, specifically selfies, creating a feeling of inadequacy and unattractiveness. Ladies, let's be careful. The Bible says it is unwise to compare ourselves among ourselves. And so we sit and we listen and we look at the, some of these pictures that you said people just make up mm -hmm. and put on social media, and then you compare yourself. Now, all of a sudden, now your self-esteem is not what it was, and you're not building self-esteem because you're taking in negative pictures, photos. Right. The, the eyes are powerful, what yes, we're seeing consistently. One of the things about images is um, sometimes we don't realize how much Photoshop someone can do to a picture to make themselves look like that. And we're trying to be that Photoshop picture, not realizing that that person feels just like you feel about somebody else. And it just becomes over and over again with generation of women just trying to be the next woman or the, um, yeah. the different people that they see online. Wow, wow. We have to be careful uh, that we are satisfied with who God made us to be and and, and, and what, who we are and things of that nature and not allow the social media and the negativity of anything to come through to, make, to change who we really are and the way we feel. You know, you can read something on social media and it begins to make you feel bad. Mm -hmm. You know, one time I read something on social media. I didn't feel bad. I got upset <laughs> because I said, I dare you say something like that, you know? And I got upset about it because I felt that if that was an individual that shouldn't even post. That's what we do, post it out mm -hmm. like that. So uh, let's be careful once again of what we're putting on our phones, what we're reading on our phones, what we're allowing to come in and to ourselves. Because remember, the Bible says guard your heart because out of it are the issues of life. In other words, you begin to live out of whatever comes in. And just know that the enemy is very clever. And how he can take something good, which is social media, that was created for good, to, and turn it into something negative that is beginning to create problems with our teenagers and the millennials and those that are going to school and, and in the bedroom at night instead of studying. Mom thinks you're studying because you got a test, but instead you're in there on social media. And so you, then you're not understanding why your grades are not where they need to be and seem like they start getting behind and they keep getting behind and just all kind of problems take place. So once again, we're talking about the positive things and the negative things of social media. Now, Michelle, we only have a few minutes left, so I want you to take your phone 
And I want you that's watching, take out your phone. You're watching right now, take out your phone. And I want you to get ready to post something that is good. Because when you post something that good, that's good, it really makes you feel good. And watch how many people just in these few minutes that will receive what you're going to send out. So take out your phone, get your phone. I know you're watching me. We're going to give you a few seconds. Get your phone, and we're going to give you a message to post out today and send it out to all your friends. Is that's, how they, that's how we do it, right? Yes, Okay, so tell, give us the process, Michelle. We're going to post something right now. You just open up your Facebook app, um, go to post a comment, and then you just type in what you want to type in. And today what we're going to type in is that Jesus loves you. Just tell somebody that Jesus loves them today and that you love them too. That way they can know that Jesus cares for them and that you as well care for them too because sometimes people need to hear that. Okay, so go to my Facebook app. She, see, she has to show me how to do this as well. Go to my Facebook app. That's Facebook. And right here where it says, what's on your mind? What's on your mind? Okay, and mine say, what's on your mind? So I'm going to tell them what's on my mind. My, what's on my mind is that Jesus loves you. I'm typing it in. Of course, I got to take time to get my letters right. Jesus loves you. And so do I. Did you get that? Type in, Jesus loves you and so do I. Now send it. Now I have to do is post. Post, okay? We hit the post. So now look at how many people that you have sent a good message to today that's telling them that Jesus loves you and so do I. That's the good things we want to use social media for and to advertise things. Michelle, this has been such a great topic. Yes, it is so man. good, and we're going to come back, and we're going to talk about something else. But I want to once again invite you to come to the Walk in the Word Church during this Christmas season. We are having our Christmas program on December 22nd at 1030. You do not want to miss it. All the beautiful songs that did Silent Night, and you know all the songs, and, and uh, Old Little Town of Bethlehem, and Away in a Manger. All those songs are going to be sung on, on December the 22nd. And also our children are going to be putting on a Christmas play. We expect to see your sons in the Christmas play yes, as well uh, because they're right there at Walk in the Word. And we want you to know that to be safe during this holiday season, Parents, keep watching what your children are watching on social media. Enjoy what the season is bringing to us because the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that you and I might be saved. God bless you. I'll see you the next time or I will see you right there at Walk in the Word.